welcome. We begin our worship with a prayer. O triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we gather here today, as we remember this solemn evening, uh, the day of your son's death, and what that means to us, we pray, O Lord, that you would open our ears to hear your word, our hearts to understand and to believe, and our lives to live by faith, knowing that our sins are forgiven by what he has done for us. We pray this all in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask, Ask of me, and, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, now therefore, O kings, kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers, rulers of the earth. earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss, Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. We join together in singing. Signed when our Redeemer died, 
sealed when he was glorified. Our readings for this Good Friday are taken from the Gospel of Luke. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, if you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. They were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean, and when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some signs done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priest and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Well, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice, by the life that you gave. We are healed for you paid the price. By your grace we are saved, we are saved. pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed we are healed by your sacrifice by the life that you gave we are healed, for you paid the price. By your grace, we are saved. We are saved. Well, he was 
was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. Pilate then called together the chief priest and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas. Barabbas was a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. And as they led him away, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Swell the 
mighty flood. Louder still and louder, praise the precious blood. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hang hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The crowd pressed in to see this man who stood condemned to die. A man they once proclaimed as king, they now would crucify. They laid a cross upon his back and pushed him off the road. The path would lead to Calvary. He fell beneath the load. And as I watched, I understood the burden that he bore was more than just a heavy tree the weight was so much more the weight of the cross was the weight of my sin not the weight of the tree that was carried by him guilt and disgrace Jesus bore in my place on Calvary's road neath the weight of the cross face was scarred, his body bruised, his head was crowned with thorns. The crowd now jeered and cursed his name, the object of their scorn. He never spoke a word to them, the silent Lamb of God. This man of sorrow bore the cross he chose to carry on. But somehow in his eyes I saw a love beyond the pain, as if he knew his sacrifice and loss would be my gain. The weight of the cross was the weight of my sin. of the tree that was 
was carried by him. My guilt and disgrace, Jesus bore in my place on Calvary's road, neath the weight of the my sin, not the weight of the tree that was carried by him, my guilt and disgrace, Jesus bore in my place. was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus called out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breast. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My riches gain, I count but loss and poor content on all my pride. From his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did a such love and sorrow me? Oh, thorns compose so rich a crown. The wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. The wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, all who gathered here and grace draw near and bless your name. So 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each of you from God our Father and our suffering Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord which forms the basis of our Good Friday message is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter, the 33rd through 39th verses. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani! which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled the sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. This is the word of God. Deceived, abandoned, left behind, forsaken, Cold, hard, harsh, cruel, bitter words that none of us want to hear. For many Christians, Jesus' last words from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? are very difficult to understand and accept. Why? We can't even begin to imagine God forsaking anyone, let alone his own son. Think of you that are parents. If you had to forsake your child, that'd be unimaginable. I can't even begin to think what that would be like to have to do that as a parent myself, let alone God leaving his only begotten son hanging there on the cross. But on the cross, Jesus looked up into the blackened sky and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever felt forsaken? Have you ever felt all alone? as if no one really cared? Perhaps you were told that you had cancer or some other terrible disease. Perhaps your spouse said to you, I don't love you anymore. I want a divorce. Maybe one of your children said to you, I hate you. Or your boss told you that you were no longer needed. Now with everything going on in our world with the pandemic of the coronavirus, all the uncertainties in life come to the forefront again and again and again. Not only are our lives touched, but the lives of everyone in this world are being touched by this horrible pandemic. Will things ever get back to normal again? In these crises of life, it seems that no one knows, no one understands, no one cares. We wonder whether even God cares. Over the centuries, there's been many other people that have wondered this same thing. In Psalm 22, King David laments that God has forsaken him. He's being attacked by all kinds of people that he doesn't even know that he's not done anything to harm. But yet they're coming after him. They're trying to take his life. It wasn't fair. He was crying out to God for help, and God did not seem to be listening to him. Have you ever cried out to God for help? and he didn't seem to be listening? I would guess that this has happened for most, if not 
all of us at one time of our lives or another. So, did God literally forsake Jesus on the cross? Or was it just because of the mental, the emotional, and, and the physical anguish that Jesus was experiencing and that he thought that God had actually left him? Here in these words of confusion and doubt and despair, Jesus demonstrates that he is human. Do we feel loneliness and friendlessness? Jesus did. Have we experienced sorrow and adversity? Jesus did. Do we wonder about the future and how things are going to turn out in our lives and the lives of the other people in this world? Jesus did. This Jesus is human. He is human, bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh, with the marks of his crucifixion still on his resurrected body. When life's troubles come and we are tempted to think that God really does not know what we are going through, we need to remind ourselves of these words from Hebrews. The writer refers to Jesus as the Son of God, but then writes that Jesus is not unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried to his heavenly Father. Did God literally leave Jesus? Yes, he did. He literally left Jesus. Why? Because he had placed the sins of the entire world, your sins, my sins, the sins of everyone who has ever lived or who will ever live on Jesus' shoulders. And because God hates sin, God left Jesus alone on that cross. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Apostle Paul writes, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, God punished the perfectly innocent one, Jesus Christ, in our place. And because God punished Jesus in your place and my place, he will never, ever punish us. Because of the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, God has forgiven each and every one of our sins, past, present, and future, and will always, always, always be with us. This is all God's doing and is available to us because of God's grace through faith, through trusting in Jesus Christ. Finally, we are told in verses 37 and 38 of our text, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This is referring to the curtain that separated the holy place from the most holy place. In Old Testament times, a curtain was to divide the tabernacle into two rooms, the holy place and the most holy place, with the former twice as large as the latter. The most holy place symbolized God's throne room. The holy place represented his royal guest chamber. You might be asking yourselves this question, why is this so important? Why are we talking about this on Good Friday. This is why. At the moment when Christ died, the curtain of Herod's temple was torn, thereby giving the believer direct access to the presence of God. Christ had entered heaven himself for us, that we too may now enter God's very presence. This means that we can go directly to God in prayer. We don't need to pray to someone or something else. We can go directly to God, our Heavenly Father, in prayer and know that he is always listening to us and that he will answer us in his time and according to his will. All because our sins have been forgiven. Most importantly, it means that God has opened heaven's door to you, to me, and to all who believe in Jesus Christ, our risen and living Lord and Savior. Jesus shared our humanity in his life 
and on the cross. We share his victory now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ, the one who lived for you, suffered and died after being forsaken by God on the cross, and was raised again for you so that you could be his forgiven child now and one day in heaven forever. Amen. so that we can come to you directly with our prayers, with our worries, with our concerns. Oh, Lord God, we come to you today praying for your guidance, praying for your peace, praying that you would grant that our fears would subside. Oh, Lord, in our world, we are living in uncertain times. We ask, Lord, that you would guide us by your mighty right hand, that you would lead us through these difficult times, that we might trust in you. Oh Lord, we pray for those who are suffering through these times of difficulties, as they are, are going through times of financial struggles as a relate, related to being laid off, those who are worried uh, due to the health issues with the COVID virus. We ask, Lord, that you simply give us peace. Help us to trust in you above all things. We pray, Lord, for all of the health care providers. Ask that you would grant them your wisdom and your grace to do the awesome task you have placed before them. Protect them from harm and give them your strength to do your will of healing. Lord, for these and all things, we lay them at the feet of your son, Jesus Christ, knowing that you will hear us and answer us according to your good will, all for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And now we join together in praying as he has taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us, us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea, he was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud 
and laid him in a tomb cut in stone, where no one had ever been yet been laid. It was a day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted, see him dying on the tree. Tis the Christ by man rejected, yes, my soul, tis he, tis he. Tis the long-expected prophet, David's son, yet David's Lord. Proofs I see sufficient of it, tis the true and faithful word. Tell me ye who hear him groaning, was there ever grief like his? Friends through fear his cause disowning, Foes insulting his distress. Many hands were raised to wound him, none would intervene to save. But the deepest stroke that pierced him was the stroke that justice gave. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And how have I offended you? Answer me, for I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O my people, Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. O Lord, have mercy. But lightly, nor suppose the evil great. Here may view its nature rightly, here its guilt may estimate. Mark the sacrifice appointed, see who bears the awful load. Tis the word the Lord's anointed, 
Son of man and Son of God. Here we have a firm foundation, here the refuge of the lost. Christ the rock of our salvation is the name of which we boast. Lamb of God for sinners wounded, sacrifice to cancel guilt. None shall ever be confounded who on him their hope have built. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people, and how have I offended you? Answer me, for I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people, and how have I offended you? Answer me, what more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God? O my people. Holy Lord God. 
holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. O Lord, have mercy. Sacrifice, I cling by faith. 